Hey, welcome folks, it's Bob here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the vacuum breaker inside of this tailpiece. Not a big deal, but there are some steps you have to follow. So stick around. I'll be right back. All right, guys, this is not going to be a long video, but before we jump over to the flushometer and I show you how to take that tailpiece off to get at the vacuum breaker, a few tools you may want to have on hand. Now, tubing cutter always comes in handy, but as a homeowner, I don't know that most of you are going to want to invest in a tool like this. This is a little on the pricey side. In lieu of the tubing cutter, a hacksaw is going to work fine. As far as your hacksaw blade goes, I would recommend something in the 32 teeth per inch range, which is kind of like a fine blade and it cuts easily through that tubular tubing. You're going to want to have either a channel lock pliers with no teeth or a spud wrench or monkey wrench with no teeth so we can avoid scratching up the chrome. I also have a regular pair of channel locks here with teeth. And uh, you may want to have a pair of snips on hand in case you have to trim something. Uh, we're going to assume that everything's going to come off, but in the real world, everything doesn't come off. So you may have to add uh, an elbow. You may have to cut some nuts off. And for that reason, you know, that's why you're going to need a hacksaw. That's why you need maybe a channel lock with some teeth on it. But enough said, so let me bring up the flushometer and I will show you kind of the procedure for uh, changing this vacuum breaker. All right, so here we are on my little makeshift tabletop display. And what you're looking at here is a Rex slash Coin Delaney flushometer. And this is a model 401-1.6, which tells you the, the, the GPM of this particular model how many GPMs it's going to use to flush the toilet bowl. And the toilet bowl actually should be matched up with the flushometer, meaning the toilet bowl should be of the 1.6 GPM style in order for everything to work. Now, back in the good old days when I started, this was a 401-3.5. And in today's world, they even make 401s-1.28s because, you know, we, we're, we're, we want to conserve water, we're using less and less GPM to get the contents from point A to point B, which, in my opinion, is not such a good thing because uh, in order to get the water from here, you know, out to the city sewer, in my opinion, it's going to take more than 1.28 gallons. But hey, what do I know? I've just been doing this for a while. But anyway, I find these in typically here in Brooklyn where I work, I would say... Two family and above, so two, three, six, 10 units, 20 units, 30 units, that's where you're gonna find these. And the culprit is, is this, there's a rubber insert in here, a rubber vacuum breaker, which we will pull out and I'll show it to you. But in order to get this out, there are a few ways you can do it, but, but depending upon which way you choose, uh, I would say, Either way, you're going to have to shut the water off. Now, on this particular model, there is a screw underneath this cap. But let me just say that on some of them, you'll see a screw, a chrome screw right in the middle here. And this here is actually the handle by which you shut it off. You just It's a knurled handle, and you just shut it clockwise, clockwise to shut it, counterclockwise to open it. In this particular model, this is a cap. So this cap comes off. And as you can see, there is a little screw in here. So we would go in here and we would go clockwise until this completely shut. Now, let me say that what you're going to want to do is once it's completely shut, you're going to want to hit this handle and you're going to want to relieve the pressure in there. And you're going to want to listen for a second. You're going to want to make absolutely 100% sure that that water shuts. Because this is a one inch incoming water supply, we can't have any water migrating through this thing, especially if it's in a multifamily building. I mean, because you can cause havoc and water damage to the apartments below. Uh, you know, once you disconnect this and get it off, it's too late. But essentially, I guess the easiest way to do this, um, and, and I'll tell you, the way I do it, but the easiest way to do this would be to loosen 
both this nut here, which is like a union nut, with, which connects to the shutoff valve, and then disconnect the nut down here on the tailpiece. And this should come off with no issue. Uh, what you're going to use here is a channel lock pliers or a spud wrench or a monkey wrench with no teeth on it. And you might want to get a bucket because when you loosen this, whatever water is left in the body here, it's all going to dribble out. So you can put a bucket on the bottom, you can get some towels just to, to, to get that uh, excess water. But be absolutely sure that this is shut 100% and once you shut it, you just kind of relieve whatever pressure is in there by hitting the handle. Okay, so then we're going to go in there and what you're going to want to do is you're going to loosen, you loosen this nut here and that should come off pretty easily. And then you're going to want to loosen this nut here. And for demonstration purposes, I have everything loose. But essentially, you loosen this nut here and this should stay up. And I have it rigged up on the bottom because I don't have it connected to any toilet. This is just kind of a tabletop demonstration, so bear with me. And then we'll loosen this nut here. Now as you do this, the water's gonna dribble out of here. It's gonna go all over the place. Whatever's in here is gonna come out. Again, towels, bucket, whatever the case may be. And you can back this off and move it out of the way. And voila. What you're looking at is the tailpiece there, and inside of that tailpiece is the rubber vacuum breaker. Now this vacuum breaker, basically what it does is it, it, it gets worn and it develops like little holes, little slits in it. And that's what happens when it's flushing. When it flushes, the water is like shooting out the holes and that's why it's coming out these little, uh, these little slits you see in the tailpiece. So when you flush it, you'll see water like spewing out of here. And that's because the rubber has got a hole in it. The rubber has become compromised. Now, this is, a, again, a Rex unit, but Sloan, Zern, Toto, they all have similar looking vacuum breakers. Essentially, they're all the same piece. It's a rubber vacuum breaker. It's got a little plastic insert in there to stiffen things up. You know, and the function of this thing is basically to prevent any backflow. For instance, let's say your toilet was stopped up and it filled up to the rim and there was a sudden negative pressure on, on, on the water side here. I mean, you could chance sucking or siphoning the water back in to the fresh water system. And this vacuum breaker is designed to, to actually cause the water to come out of these holes. So as it siphons up, it would come out of these holes and not go back into the, the water system to contaminate the water. And that's what this vacuum breaker is all about. It's a simple little inexpensive piece, but it serves a very important function. So once you get that out of there, it's probably gonna be all black and rubbery and all you know ratted up. Uh, basically, you're gonna reverse the procedure. So they come with these little washers that belong on top here. Okay, so you're gonna take the new one. After you get that off, you're gonna put this in like that. You will put the washer back on here like this. And then I like to get a little, um, you could use a little, listen, there's differing opinions. You could use some pipe joint compound on the face here very, very lightly on the face of this valve. Or you could use some uh, waterproof silicone grease on the threads here. I do, I always use my waterproof silicone grease here on the threads. And I'll always put some waterproof silicone grease back on the threads of the flushometer. And basically, you're gonna put this back on here. We'll get one quart, we'll get this quart. And then what we'll do is we'll get the nut coming up from the bottom here and very carefully get that caught. And once you get them both caught, you'll come back with either your spud wrench, your channel lock with no teeth on it because we don't want to mess up the chrome. And we're going to tighten this up. Actually, the other way, Bob. 
you'll snug this up. And you know, you snug it up. You're not going to kill it, but you'll snug it up. And once you're happy with everything, you will go back in here and I would recommend very slowly turning the water back on. Don't turn this on. Don't whack this on all the way. You want to introduce the water very slowly. And as you start to open it up, it's going to start to flush. The bowl may continue to flush until it equalizes top and bottom and everything stops. And at that point, guys, you're done. So you want to open this all the way, completely all the way. And once this stops flushing, you just simply, you're going to test it. You're going to hit that handle. It's going to flush and no water should come out of here. And that's it, guys. It's, it's that simple. It's not a big, big deal. So what I will do sometimes is, in an effort not to disturb this here, I will take this apart here. I will loosen the nuts down at the bottom. There is a nut on an elbow. There's a 90 degree elbow that goes in the back of the bowl. I will loosen the nut down at the bottom. I will also loosen the nut on the back of the bowl so I can get these fittings to move and just use a little caution here. Sometimes those nuts down at the bottom don't come off and I end up having to cut them off. And what I'll do is I'll jump over the vise there and I'll show you what to do if you can't get these nuts off. And then I'll simply replace this and then I'll simply swing it back into place. And I will catch this for, I always catch the top first. I always get the top caught first. I will whack this into place securely. It's the first nut I'm going to secure is the top nut so everything pulls up nicely. Then I'm going to go back down on the bottom and I'm going to tighten up the nut on the 90 degree elbow and I'll tighten up the nut in the back of the bowl. And pretty much guys, that's it. Don't forget to put your cap nut back if so equipped. And that's it guys. That's how you replace a vacuum breaker. Not all that difficult. This serves a very important function uh, in the scope of things, again, if the bowl fills up with water, dirty water, bowls get stopped up, people flush them, they go over. If by some chance there were a negative water pressure while this was all going on, that uh, dirty water in the bowl would get sucked back into the water system and the vacuum breaker will prevent that. So there it is, guys. If you want to give it a shot, I encourage you. Again, be careful. We want 100% shutoff here. And that's it. And I hope you uh, get in there and decide to do this yourself if you have this kind of a repair and uh, save yourself a couple of bucks. Oh yes, and guys, before I forget, if you decide to go the route I just explained to you where you, uh, you want to try to swing this out of the way, just bear in mind you have a nut here and you'll have this nut that goes into the back of the bowl. Now, if they're brass, if they're old, they could be brass, they probably will come off, but if they're not, these are white metal die cast nuts. And I'll tell you that they probably aren't going to turn. And if that's the case, you're going to have to come in here with a hacksaw. And you're going to have to come in and you're going to have to slice the nut. You're going to slice this superficially. You don't want to go all the way down to the threads. You'll slice it you got to make sure you go from one end to the other, slice it with your 32 teeth per inch hacksaw blade, and once you get a slit in there, again, nut down to the threads. You're going to want to go in there with a screwdriver where you have that slit, and you'll just twist this and pop the nut off. And then you replace the nuts, and you replace the washers, and whether you decide to use a rubber washer or the nylon washer, it really doesn't make a difference, just as long as you get that watertight. Personally, I prefer the beveled nylon versions, but the rubber ones work. And I always will put some pipe joint compound or waterproof silicone grease on these threads here, so that when I make the nuts back up again, they will run up easily and I don't have to kill myself. So there you go, guys. If you decide you're gonna go the route that I generally take, uh, this is a good thing to keep in mind.
So as you can see guys, replacing the vacuum breaker on a flushometer tailpiece really isn't a big deal. The only obstacle you're probably gonna be up against is those nuts. Now if they're brass, they'll come off. If they're of the white metal variety, you're probably gonna to have to slice them with a hacksaw and pop them off. Folks, if you're getting value out of my videos, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. And more importantly, if you want to like these videos for the YouTube algorithm, don't forget to keep an eye out for one of these two videos that are gonna pop up here to my left, your right, one of them I chose, one of them YouTube shows. I wanna thank everyone once again for stopping by the channel. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Stay well, and as always, happy plumbing. Thank <laughs> you.